Welcome to my channel and welcome to my workshop. In this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of the Lumberjack bandsaw, 10 inch bandsaw. So first of all, I'd just like to um, explain why I've chosen this bandsaw over all the other bandsaws that are out there in the tool world. Um, I did a lot of research on the bandsaws and why I needed a bandsaw, what I needed to do with the bandsaw. Um, so I, when I was thinking about what I needed and what I was going to do with it, I realised I wanted a bandsaw that I wasn't going to think in a six months time that oh, I think I'm going to need a bigger bandsaw because of the work I'm doing. I can do a lot more with a bigger bandsaw. So I knew I needed um, at least a 10 inch bandsaw. Um, to work with in the workshop. So then that brought it down to a number of uh, about three bandsaws that um, were in the price range. There was this one from Lumberjack, there was another one from Charmwood uh, Machine Tools and the other one was from Record Power Machines. Now I studied all three of those um, bandsaws and I will put the links to all those bandsaws in the description so you can have a look for yourselves to uh, compare them all um, against each other. Um, so when I, whilst I was looking to um, get prices and to compare each bandsaw to each other um, obviously I went on a lot of websites, their own websites, the Lumberjack website for the UK, the Charmwood web website and the Record Power website. Then I managed to get onto the Mano Mano website and was looking at their prices. Now when I was looking on the Mano Mano website the prices for each machine, because they're all three of them were on there, were roughly the same as on the uh, the, web, the, the the actual machines website, ma manufacturer's website. Sorry, um, but there was an added um, extra with going through the Mano Mano website was that they offered three. Um, to pay over three month instalments. Um, so that, and it was all free delivery as well, which I love free delivery. I hate it when I have to pay for delivery. Um, so that's why I went and bought this machine through the Mano Mano website rather, rather than the actual Lumberjack UK website. It's the same price on there but it was because I could pay for it in free instalments it meant that I could get it a lot quicker than I could have done if I had to pay for the whole lot out. So thank you very much Mano Mano and if you need to have a look at their website I'll put the description down below um, but it's a really good website it doesn't just do machine tools it does a whole load of um, different uh, sales stuff Hold on a second, I've just got a text coming through. So anyway, so the reason I bought the Lumberjack um, bandsaw was mainly down to the price. This in Mano Mano and on the Lumberjack website was £299. Now the spec for this um, is you're getting a 10 inch cutting width, 
and a six inch cutting depth for this uh, machine. You get a cast iron table, which is one of the other things that I needed from a table saw um, and not a pressed plated one. Um, cast iron is always the best to go with whatever machine you buy. Um, and apart from that, everything else is roughly the same. And I think these are one of those generic, I'm 99% sure these are one of those generic um, band saws that come from. And I'm going to have a look to see if it's got where it was made from, but I presume it was probably China. I can't see any. I haven't really looked at the box, to be quite honest, because it only got delivered yesterday. I was too busy yesterday afternoon to... Um, come in and actually unbox it. Um, so this is my first, you know, I've still got the bands still on it. And it's, this is where it was left by the delivery person, right in the middle of the workshop, which is ideal. So yeah, so I'll read a little bit on the top here of what's included in the pack. Um, so the technical um, data, mains voltage, obviously here in the UK, it's 230 volts. The power is a 375 watt motor. The throat width is 245 millimeters, which is roughly 10 inches. And the cutting capacity, which is that bit, is the 150 millimeters, which is a roughly six inches. The cutting speed is 400 to 800 millimeters a minute. That's what it says. The blade size that comes with it, actually, the blade sizes you can get, it's 1,826 millimetres in diameter, and you can use the 3 millimetre width up to 12.5 millimetre width. The table size is 360 millimetres by 320 millimetres. Uh, the weight of it, I don't think you really need to know that. Is it heavy? <laughs> yes, 42 kilograms and 39 kilograms of the net weight. Um, includes, and this has got a little bit of, bit of a damage on the box there where it's been pushed up against something I suppose, but it's not gone too deep, it's only just the box. It's a push sticks, a mitre gauge, and it comes with the stand as well. Um, so it's the Lumberjack BS254 um, bandsaw. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unbox it. So I'm going to put that onto uh, high speed and get everything out, lay it all out and have a look, make sure it's all okay. So once I've done that, um, I'll talk to you again. So there was one thing I forgot to mention was the price for the Charmwood um, equivalent to this uh, bandsaw. The cheapest I found that was not actually at Mano Mano, it was on eBay from West Country Woodworking Supplies, I believe that is what it's called, 347 with free postage and packaging. The record power um, machine I believe, and I'm really sorry because I should have found these details out and I will put it in the description below, it was around the £400 mark for the equivalent um, bandsaw to this one. So I'll put some of all that in the, uh, the doobly-doo, in the words of AVE, um, so you can uh, have a look at those if you need to. So carry on with the unboxing.
So as you can see, I've got it out of the box now. Um, I've got all the parts that came in the box all surrounded. So I've got the cast iron table. Um, it was very sturdy. And I've got... Okay, there are... I'll see if I can get it up closer to you. You can see there's a, some brown marks on there. Now, when I first took it out or saw it in the box, I thought they might be rust marks, to be quite honest. Um, but I've just scratched it with my thumb. And they don't appear to be rust marks. Um, they do, that is coated in a, like an oily, waxy, um, some protective coating sort of thing. Um, so I don't think that is actually rust on there. And even if it was, it would be quite easy to, uh, to remove with a bit of um, wire wool. Now, one thing I wasn't expecting to get which when I've looked on um, different places to purchase this machine um, what, I, what I found was that sometimes these machines were being sold with a circle cutting jig um, when that was on um, on eBay which was a bit more expensive I think it was around the £350 mark because the circle cutting jig to buy on its own for this machine was about £40 um, but it appears I have the circle cutting jig in in the package which is a bonus um, so I know a lot of um, wood turners make their own circle cutting jigs to fit on the um, on the table um, to cut their bowl blanks. Um, hopefully with this I won't need to. I can use this to cut my bowl blanks for my wood turning. Thank you Mano Mano and Lumberjack. So we got, I presume this is to do with the, uh, the, the fence. You got the mitre gauge, nuts and bolts, the push stick, another part of the mitre fence, and legs for the stand. And obviously the machine itself. Um, the one thing I will say, the 10mm blade that comes with it is already installed. Um, it was very sharp. Not too 100% sure how good a quality the blade is, but I'm sure for the time being, until I can purchase some new ones, um, it will be adequate for what I want. So, machine itself, you've got the tensioning knob, you've got um, a knob to open the top to expose the wheels. So, cast wheels with a rubber, um, band around the top and it looks like it has some kind of um, weights to balance it on there as well some special little weights so there's the other one so it must be because you've got three of them and another extra one on this one so that must be how they balance the the wheels Yeah, it's got a nice little brush to keep the blade clean and all the dust falls down in here. And there is a tray at the bottom, if you can see there, a tray to catch some of the solid dust. Also has a port at the back for dust extraction. And that port at the back takes three different sizes from 50 mil, 75 mil and 100 millimeter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it around so you can see the back of the machine. So there you go, there's the back of the machine. 
Um, obviously, you've got your tensioning knob, like I said before. You've got a little plastic thing here, which I believe, looking at it, and I haven't read the instructions yet, is a place to put your um, Allen keys and some little tools and stuff like that. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it looks like there's someone there to store some bits and pieces in there. You've got your tracking for your wheel. This is your knob for your um, wheel tracking. You've got your light. Nice little light that comes with it. You've got your leads. Obviously your motor. And down here is your dust extraction port with the three different hose uh, connectors. And obviously you've got your trunnion for your for your table to go on. So all in all, to be quite honest, this knob obviously, sorry, I'm, I'm digressing. <laughs> I'm playing with the knob. Um, yeah, so that knob there, you undo it and wind it up and down to be a height, which is quite cool. Yeah, like that. Um, excellent. What can I ask? What can I say? All I've got to do now is put it together. Okay, so I've had a quick read of the instructions on how to put the legs on. Um, I've got to lay the machine on its back and rest this part of the machine on this block of wood. Here goes.
Right, so there you go, the legs are on. Um, just to say something about when putting the legs on, there was one of the screw holes that got slightly um, knocked and bent, but the screw went in fine, so that wasn't a problem. Um, so the instructions say, put the, uh, the legs on first, tighten them up, then put the cross braces in, but leave them loose until you stand it up, stand it up, and then tighten the cross braces. Now, when I first put the legs on, I didn't tighten them up because experience tells me never to tighten your bolts up until they're all in place and everything is in its right place. So when I put the legs on, I left them loose, then got the cross brakes up, stood it up, and then put the uh, tightened up the cross braces. And this is, I can tell you, this is as sturdy as anything. It hardly, it doesn't even, uh, that's me pushing it from the top so there's a lot of leverage there so when you're here pushing a piece of wood through you won't get that much resistance putting a piece of wood through unless the uh, the blade has got no teeth on it probably so yeah that feels really sturdy so there you go so the next thing to do is to put the table on Right, okay, so that's the table on. Um, it was quite fiddly um, to find the screw holes on the trunnions. Um, and the trunnions don't really move that smoothly, so I might have to do a little bit of adjustment under there just to try and smooth them up. Um, we've obviously got this uh, this uh, waste plate for when you um, change the blades to remove. Um, it is plastic, it does wibbly wobbly, um, may get changed in the future for a wooden one. Um, you have to make, it is a good fit for when you push it in, but You've got to make sure everything's down below the surface or at least level with it because sometimes if you don't push it down far enough it sticks up and you'll start having problems trying to push your piece of wood through. Um, anything else? I've probably got to um, set this up square to the blade. Um, there is an adjustment knob under here to set that up. Um, but that's it, that's the table installed and now we're going to see what else we've got to do, probably the fence I reckon. Right, so I've got to install this guide rail with these four 
wing nuts as they call them. Um, just read the instructions and I'm only doing the sort of installation um, instructions. In the installation instructions it just tells you to bolt this to the table. There's no instructions at the moment on how to line up your markings on here for your fence, but that may come later. So there you go, that's easy enough. I haven't adjusted it obviously to the blade yet, so the markings on here, not necessarily, I've got it as close as possible. Um, I think the wing nuts are a bit over engineered to be quite honest for this, just to hold this on. Um, but they do give you a little bit of side movement. There's some slots in there to give you some side, side movement so you can just undo them and move them across. But apart from that, it looks quite nice and sturdy. So if you remember when I did the unboxing, I told you they've got this plastic, what looks like a tool holder, and that's what it is. That's for the Allen keys and the spanner. They're not brilliant, but they're good enough for what they do. Let's come here. Now we've got this little hole here, which is for this hook, which is the hook to hold your push stick up with. Um, so, obviously, this can be adjusted to however far you want the hook sticking out. Perhaps it's not that end. <laughs> That's better. So there you go. The little tool holder and the hook for the push stick. So the rest of the instructions are all about adjusting the table, your tracking, your, um, your saw blade tension and everything like that. So everything is together now. So I think it's time to start her up and let's see how, what noise she makes, shall we? One thing with this, the lead, quite a nice long lead. I have to say, um, it's probably about, I don't know, two, three meters long, it's quite a long way um, for most machines. Let's see if I can fit it over to here. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it gets there. So it's all plugged in. Now I'm going to pull the um, the guard down to just above the table, just in case anything um, when I turn it on, anything sort of clatters around. Hopefully, hopefully not. Um, let's check to see if the light works. There you go. Nice little bright light. Excellent. So here we go, the first start. Obviously we've got our safety switch. Okay. <laughs> what haven't I done right? Is there something?
Right, so it appears that the, um, the safety switch on this cabinet, that the little metal bracket, and I think you can see it here, and I'll try and zoom in, doesn't seem to push in far enough to um, allow the machine to be turned on. So I think I might have to um, adjust that. Adjusted. And now she changed. So yeah, it was just a little bend of the um, the little pokey bit that goes in and makes contact with the uh, the little micro switch. Just needed bending out a little bit, so nothing too worried to worry about. Um, it's a lot quieter than I imagined, um, which is really pleasing. It means I can use it quite late in the night if I needed to. Um, yes, it's really quiet. I'm just going to um, raise the uh, the guard up, and then we can. That's not bad, is it? The blade guides, they're all ball bearings. Um, I'm sure the one at the back. Yep, even the ones on the bottom, all three of them are ball bearings to keep it aligned. Um, obviously you've got your, your knobs to adjust to sort those out, to adjust them closer if you needed to or further away, whatever you were doing. First impressions with this little machine are a good thumbs up. Um, I right, say, so if you can see it, no, you can't. That's okay. Okay, good little light. Oh yes. Just as the extra bonus that I didn't realise I was getting with the machine. Is this bar you can see it's all turned to a point. The surgical cutting jig. There's a square, there's a piece of um, cast aluminium bracket at the back here with a square hole in it, which that goes through and you have a knob to tighten that up. Pointer through there, obviously locate your centre of your circle on the point, and then you can just stand here turning your piece of wood round. So that is the unboxing of the Lumberjack BS254 bandsaw. Um, okay, you've got a 10 inch throat. So you can cut boards of 20 um, inches if you need to. Um, maybe a bit too big, 20 inches, I imagine. But yeah, so you get what I mean. You've got a 10 inch cutting area from the blade to the back here. Obviously your height is six inches. Is as high as you can go. So it's the perfect size for me. Now I could have gone bigger, but unfortunately that would have been a lot more money. 
and I'm sorry if I haven't been in view for when I've been talking about this. Um, but yeah, so watch out for some projects coming on this because I've got a few lined up. Some are quite urgent. Um, so I hope that has given you some idea on how this uh, bandsaw looks and runs and everything else. Um, any questions, put them in the comments and that would be great. And hopefully all some of the details and where you can purchase things from will be in the description down below. So thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video where I'll be using this and giving it a bit of a try out. I may, no, I'm not going to say that because uh, I've been there before and haven't done anything. So yeah, so watch out for this making things in the future. So that's ta-da for me now, for now, and hopefully see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.